everyone, and welcome to the Digital Transformation Podcast by ARC. My name is Tom Cabot. Today we have two special guests, Al Garish, VP of Healthcare Strategy, and Michael Garrell, Director of Data Strategy, both from Accruent. We're excited to have them here today, and I'm also joined by my co-host, Ed O'Brien, Research Director here at ARC. Hey, Ed, how you doing? Great, Tom. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, very excited. Uh, the, the news on Accruent offering information data and some of it goes back for about a quarter of a century of for uh, ventilator maintenance as part of the larger solutions that they offer. First, Al Gresh, who is a, who is with Accruent. Al, can you give a background on your to do and what started this whole idea of the genesis of this program? Because it's very exciting that the hospitals have access to ventilator data in this regard, but also you do an awful lot in other areas. So it's a, quite an exciting news from what I can see. Yeah, thank, thanks, Ed. I'm Vice President of Healthcare Strategy for Accruent. And Accruent is a provider of computerized maintenance management software in the healthcare space. Uh, we, we also have CMMS products in other um, industries and verticals. We, we provide uh, lease management solutions, capital planning, space management solutions, and in addition to the software that we provide, we also focus uh, helping our customers get better and more efficient at utilizing our software. There's a lot of industry expertise within Accruent that is available in, in all verticals. Yeah, wow, that's great. Would you mind expanding a little bit on some of those verticals? And tell us a little bit more about Accruent, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, so Accruent is the leading provider of intelligence solutions for the built environment. And in, in our case, that built environment is hospitals and, and hospital systems. We also span real estate, uh, physical and digital assets, and the integrated technology systems that connect and control them. So as you can imagine, that means equipment and buildings and everything within the hospital systems that you know, keep them open and, and able to take care of patients. We, we serve more than 10,000 customers in a wide range of indus industries in more than 150 countries around the world. Sounds like you guys are doing an incredible job given the circumstances globally right now. So what's and, happening in the industry overall? Is it, uh, you know, we know it's unfortunately with uh, with, with COVID-19, but you know, your, your background goes back um Quite a while was with the hospitals. Were they, uh, were they um, searching for information? Did you have a th uh, some uh, thoughts that maybe you could share uh, separately? What kind of got this in motion to offer this uh, this app to hospitals? Sure. Um, so yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I, I worked most of my career uh, in, on the other side, in, in, working in hospitals, uh, running a, a very large in-house department uh, for for uh, the customers that we we now serve. And um, so, so I have a, a lot of uh, background knowledge on what's happening and, um, you know, what challenges those folks are facing. Um, so what's happening today, uh, if you can imagine, if you're watching the news, things are changing mm -hmm. daily, even hourly. Uh, you have a lot of work from home uh, staff that, that uh, wasn't previously doing that. Essentially, anyone that's not uh, directly associated with uh, direct patient care or supporting those folks are, are now compelled to work from home. Uh, the financials that are, that are uh, hitting the hospitals right now uh, are, are a huge impact. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the margins for the average margin for uh, not-for-profit hospitals in uh, the U.S. today is about 1.6 percent, which is wow. razor thin. So, you know, any any hits to that uh, can can flip them over to the to the to the red side, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you think no elective procedures being done. Those are the procedures that they typically make money on. There's uh, a capital freeze uh, in a lot of places now because they they don't want to spend any of their planned capital in case they need to spend additional funding on on equipment that they hadn't planned for, uh, and, and that's kind of what got us. To, to this point, there's, um, as I'm sure you've heard, a lot of equipment shortages, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly with the ventilators. And what that means is that you're you're compelled to make optimum use of the the units that you have because every every hospital in the U.S. is experiencing the same issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about the hot zones like New York. Who are getting the the lion's share of mm -hmm. these cases? 
you know, have, have eaten up a lot of, a lot of the available uh, equipment. And uh, as you can see, the numbers climb across the country. You know, ventilators is the, the primary device that people are, are trying to get their hands on. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Um, with, with, with uh, the availability being uh, short, uh, you know, we need to make sure that our, our customers uh, have optimum use of what are, are using what they have uh, and, and, and getting things turned around. So with this uh, part predictor tool, it, it, uh, it provides, a, a, based on 25 years of, of actual service data, uh, what they would need for both planned maintenance and corrective maintenance mm-hmm. uh, so that if one of these devices does go down, the, the hospital can turn that around as quickly as possible mm-hmm. because the, the need is, is uh, as, as, as great as it's ever been. Right, right. And I know from McCrew and I know in other discussions we've had, but um, even from this perspective, the the difference between uh, uh, preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance and, and, and focusing on the latter is something you've done. Can, can you share some of the, for example, some of the, um, uh, not only from the data, but from what you've seen from uh, maybe job plans or work plans, uh, kind of the difference and what, why, why not only this app can make a difference, um, but also just in general what you do for hospitals across the board, the, the predictive maintenance perspective. Uh, can you share your thoughts on that? Sure, absolutely. And, I, and I'll, I'll let Michael get into mm-hmm. the, the, the detail of, of the tool itself. But in general, uh, you have uh, two different uh, types of, of maintenance that's done on, on uh, any, any uh, medical device. One is planned maintenance, and those are activities that you you have to complete uh, at certain intervals. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, specifically with ventilators, there are things like O2 sensors that uh, – Need to be replaced at at, at uh, certain intervals, mm-hmm. and and so knowing when you would need those and uh, getting those ordered sooner rather than later uh, is is key to getting those devices turned around. Mm-hmm. On the on the uh, corrective maintenance side, one of the things that the tool does a great job of providing is is predictive information mm-hmm. about based on historic uh, repair information when when does this thing typically fail and how does it fail so having a clear understanding based on what makes and models of ventilators you have in your fleet uh, understanding what you're going to need mm-hmm. uh, is is uh, w- what we felt was going to provide uh, some some tremendous value to the industry uh, in addition to that uh, we created some reports uh, some standard reports that uh, for all of our uh, healthcare platforms that we felt would bring value, um, things like um, you know coding the the work that's related to mm-hmm. COVID nineteen. Uh, so as, I mean, you, I, I'm sure you've heard about the CARES Act and mm-hmm. the amount of money that's that's uh, going to become available, but um, it, we want to help hospitals identify that that work proactively so that it, if they Need that information in order to get um, funding from the, from, uh, from the CARES Act. They would have that readily available. Uh, additional great. reports around things like workload management, mm-hmm. um, and, and again, uh, re- reports around uh, specific device types that uh, th- that are becoming in, in short supply. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like, in, in in many ways, of course, the uh, the, the app and also the, the the data that you provide and have provided, the company has provided, uh, can not only provide asset management strategy, strategy um, uh, uh, realization, including mean time to repair and mean time to failure, very powerful metrics that they may not f- fully have access to or thought about too much in some organizations, but you're helping them in such things as workflow and coding information to have them make better decisions. I mean, this is really exciting because it's, uh, you know, what you're offering to the hospitals. Uh, you don't have to do this. I mean, it's clearly a, it's something you've been doing for a number of years, but to actually give them access to this intellectual property, I just want to mention to the whole, to the whole team that, uh, you know, this this is what it's all about, and you know, I know it's probably a very humble organization, but I think the uh, the, the industry uh, really really appreciates uh, what you're doing. 
Uh, Michael, can you introduce yourself? But also, uh, also would like to get your sense on the uh, uh, kind of the you know, the nuts and bolts in kind of a succinct way of of you know the parts uh, ventilator part um, methodology. How you know how you uh, look at the data, not for all the parts, of course, not the whole asset hierarchy, but just you know how uh, is there like a uh, you know an elevator uh, version of um, you know of what you offer? Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Gorell. I'm the director of data strategy over at Accruent. And uh, for the last year and a half or so, my team's been working with our the data out of our healthcare CMS platforms to really help us understand equipment reliability and help our customers understand how to apply that equipment reliability to make the best decisions that they can in terms of acquisition of equipment, but also staffing and maintenance uh, of that equipment. And so once, you know, kind of we started seeing this need for ventilators or need for more ventilators, uh, we started thinking about how we can take our data and apply it in a very useful way really quickly to help our hospital partners and others, right? Uh, we're giving this away to anybody in the industry, mm-hmm. but really help them maximize the uptime of their ventilators so that we could ultimately improve the outcome and patient care, right? We had this idea, we started brainstorming what we could do with our data. And you mentioned predictive maintenance before, and that's really where we wanted to go with it is to be able to predict what parts would be needed when. And so we started taking a look at the data that we had on the equipment and then replacement parts. We realized that we could analyze and mine our data in an aggregate form so that we could see when equipment breaks Mm -hmm. based upon the age of the fleet of equipment. So we've aggregated all the data together and we're now able to tell a hospital if they have four-year-old ventilators of a particular make and model, what are some of the parts that we're going to predict that they need within the next three months? Outstanding. Mm -hmm. So they can uh, maximize uptime, presumably, if they have, first off, to know what might happen, but also to have parts on hand or readily available uh, when it happens or hopefully before it happens. So keeping uptime at a, at a maximum, that, that's perfect. Exactly. And, and not only just the hospitals themselves, but we've also started talking with some of the part distributors as well to mm-hmm. ensure that the full supply chain is aware of what materials are going to be needed mm-hmm. uh, in these in these times. And how are the hospitals? I mean, uh, are they, uh, I know quite a few, probably a little over half are your clients anyways. And like in, in any implementation, I'm sure some use some more than others of uh, capabilities within solutions. Is this kind of an eye opener for from what you're seeing for some, or is it uh, something that they're well familiar with with other assets? You know, I was honestly when I first thought of this idea and I started talking about it with Al, I was my initial thought was, oh, you know what, these hospitals are going to know what parts that they need to mm-hmm. order, but in reality, uh, they didn't. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so we've seen actually a few different use cases, even use cases that we didn't even think about. So the first you know, use case is what parts do I need on hand, right? We, we just mm-hmm. talked about that. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, you know, many of the hospitals didn't really know exactly what they would need on hand and when. So they were running reports and we heard that they were sharing it with especially these multi-hospital IDNs with the you know other hospitals in their networks to make sure that they could check their stock critical spare parts mm-hmm. against what we're finding. You know, that was one that we, you know, kind of the, the use case that we expected. One of the use cases that we've heard of that we didn't necessarily expect, but it's been quite interesting, has been hospitals that are now needing to acquire equipment that they have absolutely no history with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And to be able to give them some visibility into what parts they will need to maintain those that equipment. Because... You know, they might know, they, they might at least have an idea of how many oxygen sensors they run through with their typical equipment, but they don't know how many sensors or, yes. you know, filters or what have you mm-hmm. parts they would need for equipment that they've never had. So we're giving them visibility into this as well. So well, that was kind of an interesting very use case. Powerful. I would think too, with the, uh, those that are coming out, uh, even though they're limited of, from, uh, you know, from the national stockpile, like you say, it's, you know, you're starting with the blank slate and having some idea on what they may need to, stock and what I may need to get it running if it's, if it's an if it's a you know if they're models that are old and something that they're not familiar with in, in, in some ways this can give, give them some at least some backup information to you know start heading down that road and getting them into, into service I would think yeah that's also a really good point too because we do we are seeing a lot of hospitals not only just out of the national stockpile but out of their own retired assets ah, we mm-hmm. see 
retired assets that are coming back. And so being able to not only know what preventive maintenance needs to be performed, which we can do through you know, our CMS mm -hmm. tool, but then also being able to predict what parts they need to continue to keep them running because they may not have been using this equipment for who knows how long, right? Sure, sure. So giving them, again, that visibility because we are taking into account you know, data from 20 you know, 20 years worth of data, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so chances are we have data on that particular ventilator that may have been out of service. Wow, that's that's very powerful. So, and this could be for Al as well. What's next? What are you seeing? Uh, clearly learning some new things every day. Um, where do you th see this or similar programs per perhaps heading? Yeah, so if you think about what, what's happening with regard to the, the healthcare space, Essentially, they're having to double the, the bed capacity. Wow. And, and, and so if, if you have a designated ventilator patient or ventilator bed, there's other equipment that has to be incorporated with that. Mm -hmm. Beds, of course, infusion pumps, monitors, because you have to monitor those patients. And so, you know, I think th this sort of sets the model for what other types of equipment uh, we could be looking at to do similar things. The other thing, Ed, is is uh, you know, we, we we talked about a, the set of standard reports that were that we've developed. We're constantly garnering feedback from our customers, finding what else do you need. There are so many sources of in, in, information out there that people need to stay plugged into. So we're looking at you know can we provide a single source of all of that information that people can tap into because we're looking at that information. And, and those sources anyway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then as time goes forward, we're identifying information that would be valuable to the entire industry and presenting that information in blogs or podcasts like this one, mm -hmm. uh, webinars, so that we can share best practices and, and recommendations based on not only our own experience, but the experience of others. One one example of that is uh, we did a webinar and in that talked about one hospital was doing to segregate aggregate their staff and develop two different teams and had each of them working three days at, at a time. So mm -hmm. working Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, one team and the other the other team working Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. and, and so you kept a, a complete team that if, if somebody on that team got sick, sure, yeah, you, you could still you could still function, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so after the webinar, I talked to a couple of our customers that went ahead and employed that strategy, and and we're extremely grateful. So uh, again, it's 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 about doing everything everything that we can as a company to help our, not just our customers, but the entire industry through this crisis. That's great. Now for, for Al and Michael, is, is some of this thought process now kind of new and enlightening in some ways? And what was kind of the pivot? What is the pivot? What do we see going forward from this as a, as a country and as kind of thoughts as we head into the next year or two of across the board on healthcare? You know, is there any particular observation that may cross across different paths as we head forward? Yeah, on on, uh, on the data front, I mean, we're seeing a lot of interest in hospitals making data back decisions, mm. right? So in the past, we've heard a lot of decisions being made by either by feel or by a recommendation of, of others that don't necessarily have any data that's backing mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing a lot, even before the, the pandemic, we started hearing a lot about how hospitals were needing to be more capital efficient, margins are dropping, and they, they you know, needed to, to optimize their spend. And so as we started building out tools for our customers to use, we really wanted to make sure that they were using data to make the best decision. And we're seeing that continue, and I think it's going to become even more critical as we move forward. Like Al mentioned, you know, hospitals are really feeling uh, a financial struggle right now due to the pandemic as well. Not, you know, who, who would have guessed, right? Yes. Um, and and so we're going to continue to see that. Some of the things that it's done for my team as well on the product side has been really enabled us to get a kickstart on how we use uh, parts materials data to help organizations ensure that they're properly maintaining their equipment and being most efficient about maintaining their equipment, not just purchasing and uh, disposing. Yeah, one, th one thing I'll add to that is mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure everybody has in the back of their mind that I just can't wait for things to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I think we all understand that there's going to be a whole new normal. Mm-hmm. 
that's going to come out of this. And uh, I think in particular, as Michael alluded to, around the area of of efficiency and optimum workflows. This is going to uh, uncover less than optimal uh, processes and workflows that are that uh, have been going on. And and I and I think after this, there's going to be a whole lot of people that don't ever want to go through this process as uh, unprepared as as many have been. And what do I need to do? in order to streamline my processes and workflows. And I, I think, uh, you know, that's an area where we can provide immense help for the healthcare industry. Good point. And, and the point earlier uh, made about the data-driven decisions and this being part of our digital transformation podcast, something we've been talking about for a long time is just, you know, using information from data, not just data. And uh, it sounds like you're helping your your customers and, and prospective customers to make that move to make make good use of data. Um, I know you're busy. I want to just, uh, if there's any closing comments on validation or just closing comments in general, any observations of things that I might have missed, uh, just uh, your, your, your thoughts? No, I, I think we I think we covered uh, what we needed to, and, and uh, we, we, aren't, we aren't over this. Um, you know, I talked uh, briefly at about uh, our customers' desire to keep their uh, employees safe. Mm-hmm. And I, I just saw a report this morning from one single organization where six, 600 to 700 workers uh, tested positive. Um, and, and, and so, uh, again, uh, we, we just all need to stay plugged into this and, and uh, help support each other in any way that we can. So true. So true. And hey, Michael, before we wrap up here, if people are trying to get involved with the app, how do they do that? And um, how do they use it as well? Well, the app is available for free. Anybody uh, can use it. And you simply point your browser to cv19data.accruent.com. That's cv and then the number 19data.accruent, A-C-C-R-U-E-N-T.com. And there's no gate. Uh, you can start immediately filling in your ventilator inventory information, including age and number of devices. And we dynamically start creating a list of parts. You can then download that report or just use it right there. Um, if, if a hospital has any questions or doesn't want to, you know, enter in all their inventory, we could also work with them to create them a report as well. Uh, just email ADI at accruent.com. Al and Michael, thank you so much. Uh, Accruent as a company, thank you from the industry. What a what a great way to share your your information and help everyone uh, uh, ensure up a uh, maximum uptime. And uh, I'm sure we'll have other discussions beyond this. But it's uh, it's a great thing you're doing, great information you're sharing, and we, th- we thank you for your time. Well, thank you thank for you. having us, Ed. Thank you. Anybody who's interested in getting more information, you can visit us at arcweb.com or on our streaming platforms, Digital Transformation Podcast. You check out our Smart Cities Podcast too as well. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.